TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are not. We are live. But you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Right behind me, you see it. Little warning screen just in case. Uh, we do have Patreon. We post five days a week. Twitch.com, right at the bottom of the screen. That's where you can catch anything, man. This is the Taking Down the Manchester OCG. This is the last part. This is the last episode. Talk to me. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. No copyright infringement intended. All rights belong to their respective owners. True. At the start of the investigation, I never thought this is I'd next be time arresting okay. a police officer. Money laundering offences. When all teams are ready, the strike will be called. I know I was muted. I, I didn't want y'all to hear what I was saying. by Detective Sergeant Martin Suter, has launched an operation to bring down the area's most significant drug gang, the Adam OCG. This organized crime gang is responsible for the exploitation of children. What did they ask you to do? Sir? So what? Clock. Our objective is Dismantle this OCG from top to bottom. The investigation involves an attempted murder case. So we want to get After a, a man was attacked when he tried to intervene in a road rage incident on the New Boulder State, the gang's power base. <laughs> the main suspect. Mohammed Skinnier Ways is believed to be one of the most senior members of the Adam Gang. Cameron Brooksbank was viciously attacked. He's a senior member. He is, he's silly. He is also the son of the OCG's alleged boss, Sajid Hussain. You got Sajid sat in there with two heavies. Getting taste of this. The trial resulted in a hung jury. After only one person identified Skinny Ways as the Axe Man. Free trial. What are they gonna do next? But in a recent development, police have found a new witness. A man who was kidnapped by the gang and has admitted working for them. Yeah, I think we've got the vehicle now. Has just told police he too witnessed the Axe attack. Yeah, man, they dug their own grave. He said that I was there when the axe attack happened. So think back, take your time, tell me everything. You were in the unit of this, and uh, we heard uh, uh, shouting, and there was a fight between some agents and some white people. And uh, we came down from the alleyway. Once we come down there, we saw uh, a man coming back with us in his hand. He saw Skinny he was, with an axe in his hand. Yeah, he was running back. And he had like a lot of black guys running in. Can I ask you to draw me a map? That's the church, Lord. 
Yeah. Uh, well, that's the, the only way. This is very hard for people to do. It's dry. It's brilliant. They kidnapped the wrong person here. They were stupid. They knew too much. So I think that was there and, and didn't know what's going on. It's absolutely crazy. Crazy. This the worst thing the skinny and them could have did was bother this dude with his kid, man. He cuts himself off the map and the way he describes it coming out next to a new house here. That's where the attack happens here. Skinny off he goes, gets in a car, so our lads here watching it. We put that in court and we say, look, that's where our witness is, that's where he's described. Look how close that is. It was some out of feet away. The man's statement will be submitted as evidence. Bro, and they're drawing pictures and everything. During the upcoming retrial. Bear in mind the issues we've got around the ID. That's brilliant. He was there and he knows them. You don't get better than that, do you? attack, Cameron must once again face the men he believes attacked him in court. The first time that I was in court, I was shaking. I was scared. I just want to get it over and done with, really. The trial judge has asked for a statement detailing the impact the attack this has six had months on him. later he getting heavier when i woke up from the first operation no depressed i remember i lied there in the bed and i looked out the window and i thought my career and everything's going down the drain now because of this cameron was hit twice with the axe his hand was almost severed but surgically reattached i had about five operations I got depressed well, <laughs> I tried to do myself in a few times and all that. Told you. Huh. I got rushed into hospital because I took an overdose. Hey, you don't mean to upset you and all that? Oh, well. Yeah. I've had a tough, tough 18 months. I'm not. I'm not the same person I was two years ago, and I don't think it ever will be. They wanted a retrial. Not a nice crime. It doesn't discriminate. Right. Good luck. This gang tried to murder somebody on the street with an axe. Someone that's completely innocent. They will prey on anybody. As a police officer, you've got to keep going at them. You can't take a backward step. I don't be able to rest until I know if they're going back to prison or they're going to roam the streets. All you've got to concentrate on today is giving your best evidence. Just gonna get out of Not gonna lie, it seems like his hand is working pretty good. Whatever doctors helped him, like he's, he's got pretty good motion in there. Ready? We're ready. I'm with you. Don't go on. Stay strong. Stay strong. Right, 
I think going to court and giving evidence in any case is tough. To then give evidence in a trial involving organised criminals, I think that is scary. Doing it again because it's a retrial and, and the same people give the same evidence and, and stand up and be counted. I think that's courage. After two hours in the stand, Cameron returns. I'll go and check if you want to buy out. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, hard work, that. Two hours again. Hard work. Yeah. Well, there's nothing else we can do now. It's in the, in the land of the gods. A lap of the gods, whatever you call it. As per the previous trial, Cameron acknowledges to the court he cannot say for sure who swung the axe. Cameron, he's not identified um, Skinner. The case hinges on an ID. The new eyewitness takes the stand. This lad. It's his testimony now that was pretty crucial. If you put that act in someone's hand, he's the one that's done the attempt murder. The jury retires to consider its verdict. They have three options for skinnier ways. Attempted murder, wounding with intent, or not guilty. He's definitely getting wounded with intent. I don't know about that AM like I said last time, but that wounding with intent, that's the charge. You two can go in. Do you want to go in? I think, I think it's just a bit. Yeah, you two go in. Come on. Sure, friend. Mm. Yeah. Organised gangs think they're untouchable. The message has got to be loud and clear from the court system. You're just hoping that it's going to be a guilty verdict. Sounded like guilty. They've unanimously said a guilty result, and on count two, um, which was count the two. section 18 assault. And so guilty of section 18. Yeah. Sentencing. With intent. Uh, sentencing yeah. on 18th. Of Told you. I knew it was wounding with intent. Good. And he's summing up, and he stood, skinny up, and as he stood him up, he's explained how horrific the attack was, and how it's going to be a long custodial sentence he's going to be getting. The jury's come back in, mate. Yeah. Guilty of wounding. All right. Yes. Oh, fuck. Oh. OK. Oh, Thanks, Mark. All right. Thank you very you, love. Yeah. Yeah. The judge at that point has said to him, you're looking at a very long custodial sentence for this horrific, brutal attack. Yeah. Thank you very much, Mark. All right, you, you OK? Not for the house. Alright, thank you, man. You look after yourself, you know where I am. You too, right. See you, mate. Bye. Bless him. Good. It's just, it's good. Particularly from where that family had been and what they've come through, it's, it means a lot. It's been a long couple of years. But yeah, it's good. from Rochdale has been jailed for 18 years for his part in an attack on a group of tree surgeons. As well as the 18-year sentence for skinnier ways, 
Three of the five other men on trial are found guilty of violent disorder. Two are acquitted. Judge John Potter described it as a savage and barbaric act. I'd like to say, as district commander, we have brought these offenders, criminals, to justice. We've taken them off the streets of Rochdale, and tonight they will be in prison. A good result at court. That sentence reflects the crime that he did. But it's important that we carry on. turns its attention back to the wider activity of the Adam OCG. Multiple suspected gang members remain free in the community. And some significant new information has come to light. What could that be? This briefing will be sensitive and it won't be talked about. The reasons why it will become apparent. I'll give you some of the details, but not all the details. That's our victim. The key witness in the axe attack trial claims he was previously forced to deal drugs for the gang and has provided police with the name of a new suspect who he claims has links to the OCG. Now, again, this is a sensitive part of this operation, and I mean really sensitive. She's a policewoman. The witness says, I am openly dealing drugs in that house, and the police officer was there. And she also knew that the gang members that actually put him in debt bondage was dealing, because when she was in the front living room, I would get calls on the phone. Bro, I'm really watching a show. I, I'm, I'm really watching real life, but this is like a movie. This is like a movie. To direct me to deal drugs. I would go and get the drugs and go and deal those drugs. I would return with the money and go into the front living room and put the cash in a pouch under the couch whilst she sat there. I used to do this loads throughout the day. She knew, she even said to me, if you get caught dealing, keep your mouth shut. He overhears conversation between the officer and <laughs> saying, don't go shot yourself, let him do it. Just turn off it, meaning the drugs line. This is a serious investigation. We're not playing games here. Does anybody know any of the individuals I've mentioned on that briefing? No? Right. Happy days then. The unit launches a confidential investigation into the police officer's activities. Her phone records are sourced, and the team analyzes the numbers she's been calling and the addresses they are linked to. Is that Reggie May's address? Street's Reggie's address. Is it? Yeah. Arson Alley. 114 times in contact. It's over, the jig is up for everybody. Arson Alley. Suspected gang members Reggie Mia and Arslan Alley were previously arrested on suspicion of drug dealing and child exploitation, but released without charge. 20 of space fired, goes up to 50. It's a lot of calls up. 20 for June on the stride day. Weird coincidence. Yeah, massive with that. The phone data also reveals a surge in calls to the police officer's handset on a day when multiple suspected members of the gang were arrested. Fucking not right, this. This girl's phone spikes on the stride day. I know we had a lot of key days, boys. If a serving police officer is in contact with an organized crime gang, best case scenario was it would be a lawful reason. Worst case scenario is that police officer is a member of that organised crime group. 
And the question's got to be, has that person intentionally? You need to call H, H, line of duty. This is what he do. He, he, he finds and he prosecutes bent coppers. Infiltrated the police to gather information. The witness in the case is now being classified as a victim of modern day slavery due to the forced conditions he says were imposed on him by suspected gang members. We have got a victim of modern day slavery, forced to deal drugs. Has the officer told anybody what was going on? As cops, if you know what's going on, they've got to tell somebody. Take away that this is a cop. Yeah. It's very difficult to do because it makes us all nervous as anything. Take away this person is a cop and let's just concentrate on what we've got. If you facilitate the harbouring of a victim of modern day slavery, you commit that offence. This officer has had training in recognising victims for modern day slavery. How could you possibly not know? Right, decision's made. It's I'm fucking nervous about this one. I'm hoping it is literally just silly decisions or silly mistakes. I'm hoping she's not been put in the police so she can feed back information about police operations. That's your worst nightmare. I can't wait for y'all to go get her. It's gonna be entertaining. When we go to the address, we have to mobile phones primarily. No asking about it straight through the door. I reckon as soon as people here now can just rock on. At the start of the investigation, I never thought that I'd be arresting a police officer. As with all investigations, though, no matter what your occupation is, if the evidence takes you in that direction, no matter how comfortable or not you are with that, then that's what you have to do. Right, nice one. Is everyone good to go? Yeah. <laughs> she don't even know it's coming. Yeah, contact. contact. Hello, please. I thought I'd just sit down for a second while I explain something to you. You are going to be placed under arrest. I am. You're going to be placed under arrest. What are you doing to me? You under Place you under arrest. Don't say anything, but may harm your defence. Don't mention when questioned something you like right in court. We're doing our job, you you know this, yeah? And then we will be searching the house. What's all that? The jig is up, sweetheart. That's CPS case papers. But that's case papers for the kidnap. They did, yeah. The team discovers Crown prosecution documents relating to a court case involving a suspected gang member. She gonna get a lot of time. Yeah, it's not like this. Why would you have that? There's also this, which seems to refer to defences regarding an attempt murder. That's a beehive trial, isn't it? About the attempt murder and the violent disorder. They also find notes about the axe attack involving skinnier ways and a list of arguments. Think about it, because that's how they found dude's address, this officer. To counter an attempted murder charge. Yeah, we'll have it all. Just take it all. This officer is taken outside of the Greater Manchester area to be interviewed. Arrested at five minutes past six this morning. That's her? 
Who told you to say that? One of the officers. Okay. Did you understand the allegation that's been made against you? Yes. Okay, I'm going to authorise your detention at the police station because the officers are going to have to ask you some questions. The unit now has 24 hours to either charge or release the officer. Yeah, sure. She's definitely getting charged within this 24 hours. Never in my worst nightmares thought I'd be arresting the serving police officer. Um, no, it's not what I joined the police for. I joined the cops because you want to get the baddies, you, you want to put people in prison that need to go to prison. She's a bad guy. She needs to go to prison, right? It makes me feel... I feel a bit upset, to be fair, that I'm, I'm arresting a cop. Too bad. Do your like job. It. Not one bit. Too bad. From the items found in her house, the team examine a notebook, which suggests the officer has been compiling notes about the axe attack investigation. So it starts here, so if you look, Cameron Brooks Bank. And then she's making notes. So it's like she's raising points that yeah. she's going to feed back. She was a death with her. She was, no, no, I won't get caught back. I won't get caught. Well, look at you now. 13 hours after being arrested, the police officer is taken from a custody cell to be interviewed. So, you're arrested for modern day slavery, conspiracy to supply class B drugs, namely cannabis, and no way suspecting or participating in the activities of an organised crime group, uh, and also misconduct in a public office. As part of the house search, we found a book. A lot of the stuff in it is, a, is to do with the axe attack. And you've taken a lot of notes. Can you explain those notes? <laughs> Did you think it was appropriate, obviously, knowing the position you're in? <laughs> it's a horrific incident, this. Horrific. Someone's got life-changing injuries. Yet in the, in some of these notes, you wrote next to them, LOL. Do you think that's appropriate? Can you explain that? <laughs> The police interviewers yeah, move on to the witness's work. core accusation that the officer was aware of and complicit in the gang's drug dealing and exploitation. Do you know anyone, anyone who's a victim of modern day slavery? I think you do. The victim has, has stated that he's been moved from one address to another. When she was in the front living room, I would get calls on the phone to direct me to deal drugs. Are you there? She even said to me, if you get caught dealing, keep your mouth shut. Did you say that to him? The interviewers now focus on the officer's potential links to other suspected Adam gang members. Now this is a highly sophisticated group with capabilities to injure people. Okay, so this lad is currently serving years for chopping someone's hand off. Do you know any of these people? Victor Sham or Reggie or Julia? What about Arslan Ali? Even the police do it. If the police get in trouble, they go on in there and send no comment. No comment. They know it don't help their case. Whatever they've done or whatever, in whatever situation. No comment. You are friendly with his You've contacted 149 times. What's that about? You're a police officer. And... These two are the busiest, probably the well, most well-known cannabis dealers in Rochdale. 
Watch your association. Are they passing information to any of this group? No. Have any of this group ever contacted directly? No. We know that this lad has. Can I stop his name, please? Sajid As a police officer, you have a duty. So why are you associating with people who are connected to organised crime? No. Following the police interview, officers await a charging decision from the CPS. I mean, they might not get nothing out of her, though. They might let her go. Do y'all think that's sufficient evidence? Just the notebooks? I mean, it is. Or she could have just been doing diligent work and took it home for, like, you know what I'm saying, to, for extra credit studying material. Who knows? She could just be a tryhard. Everybody in the community knows who the bosses of these organised crime groups are, but they're living in fear. Without taking down the bosses, you're not going to take down the gang. You've got to catch and convict the bosses to effect change. Eighteen months into the operation, and Martin's team believes they are closing in on the man suspected of being the overall boss of the Adam OCG. The Adam OCG are involved in the distribution and supply of Class A and B controlled drugs. Money is funneled upwards through key lieutenants to the head of the OCG. In this case, the head of the OCG is Sajid Hussein. These people are earning they want him bad. a lot, a lot of money. Slam him the the markup on drugs is ridiculous. They're, they're earning hundreds of thousands of pounds every few months without a shadow of a doubt, if not more. And all the money that's being earned goes to the bosses. Intelligence demonstrates that Sajid Hussein sources heroin and cocaine principally through a source in Bradford. Imports Class A and B drugs to street dealers in Greater Manchester and elsewhere in the UK has not declared any income or paid tax as an individual. Images on his phone indicate that he is investing in a car hire business in Pakistan and has property there. Starting the petrol station too in Pakistan. Could be doing it we through his own business. We spoke to somebody who said he's fucking loaded. Said he's got a lot of money that he's moving about. If you think about it, say, oh, it's a drug dealer. They ain't clever. I beg to differ. The, the, the bosses that we're trying to target, have they been caught doing what they're doing? No. Therefore, they're cleverer than us. They've managed to deal 400 kilos of heroin at least. At least he knows. His son, though, is an idiot. But, but, he's not. He's just off the one line. Therefore, they're successful. The boss ain't gonna have his fingerprints on a kilo of drugs. The only way you can get them is through the money. But it won't just be under the bed or built into the floorboards. It's hidden away in, in umpteen different bank accounts, Paper different trails. properties, you different businesses. Difficult is is finding where that money's hidden. Intelligence demonstrates Hussein arranges for money to be sent abroad as needed and uses his business, Naz Kebab, which is now at his third premises to launder money. He has invested approximately £150,000 in refurbishment and he has signed a 20-year lease at £25,000 a year. We know it was just a shell. Eh? So it was ripped apart. Oh, this is it now. It's a big venue. The number one in Rochdale. They think it's hidden in the walls or something? Martin decides to focus the investigation into money laundering on Sajid Hussain's restaurant, Naz, in the heart of Rochdale. Now, we used to have all these businesses, see this one on the right side? New Orlando. Yeah. They used to run from there. Small business, moves out there, goes through the one. Next thing you know, he has that, that big restaurant there. Gets that, land next to it. He refurbishes that whole premises. It's always a restaurant, man. There's so many restaurants that I look at where I'm where, in Chicago, and I'd be like, how are they still alive? There's nobody ever in there, and hey. <laughs> Got the 
During the time the Adam Gang is believed to have risen to dominate the Rochdale drug market, Nas has grown from a small kebab shop into one of the largest restaurants in the area. Police experts have been working for months to access encrypted data from almost 50 phones seized during the first round of arrests. Has it worked? The unit has just received a new file of downloads from some of the 18 phones Obviously. found in Sajid Hussain's house. You might be taking Bear in mind, I'm in the house and find a bag of heroin. Yeah. I found another set of texts from Skinny, and he's like, you need to get off a sniff. You're too old for all this. Might be taking too much of the product. Look at this, Wilk. This is a bank in Pakistan. That's where I bet it's fucking money going through there. We're looking for the money, aren't we? There's a got some group of messages between mm -hmm. Sham and Sajid. It's a Sham. He's in Pakistan. He's doing his bidding in Pakistan. Yeah. It's definitely Sham. Oh, right. Happy days. He's in Pakistan. Yeah. He's at home and not still. Basically, they're talking about some business here. Analysts discover a series of texts between Hussain and his nephew Iktasham Abid, or Sham. Intelligence suggests that Sham may now be controlling the gang's finances. This is Saj to Sat Sham. Need some top-up cash, all finished now, it's at the end. Cash going like water. How much can you lend, please? Sham's in it, Pakistan. Saj is back home. Wants more money sent from Pakistan. Yeah. Give him 10,000, please. Two attached images, he's showing yeah. exactly what he's talking about here. Yeah, it's definitely the Nas uh, restaurant, looking all nice and shiny. The implication is that they're sending money from Pakistan to fund the new restaurant. The texts appear to show the movement of undeclared money from a bead in Pakistan to Hussein in the UK. That is actually nailed down top two of the organisation, chatting about sending money. Outstanding. It's really dead simple. He made empty shell. <sighs> I found that paper trail quick, didn't it? I mean, to us it's quick, but it probably took some months. Into that business, 125 grand, when he's declared no income. At that point, we have got the money laundering offences, because it's down to him to show where that income's come. He's not declared it to HMRC. No income, big house, business. Nobody's gave a legitimate reason where any of that money's come from. With the evidence against Sajid Hussain building, one final phone linked to him is unlocked. So we've got, got all the keys, don't it? five text messages here, but most notably on the 14th, we found this message. Drop my phone and iPad off at Naz restaurant. It's Naz, get someone else, drop it off. We'll not say anything to you. If you do not comply, I will hunt you and kill you. Adams is mine, you get what I am saying. I'll give you an ounce B when you bring it. Give me that again. Drop my phone and iPad off at Naz restaurant. It's Naz. Get someone else, drop it off. We'll not say anything to you. If you do not comply, I will hunt you and kill you. Adams is mine. I'll give you an ounce B when you bring it. Mr. Front of Businessman there that's... I uh, shouldn't have sent that from your phone, buddy. All respectable, say. If you don't bring this phone back that you've got off me for whatever reason, I'm going to kill you. Yeah. And if you do drop it off, I'll give you an ounce of B yeah. when you bring it. And 
Everybody knows what P is. Heroin. You've never had an individual claim the line is purely mine. It's had you to say, and he's saying, it's mine. You nailed yourself to the cross right there, buddy. You're done. You just said it on your phone. You're done. You're done. I thought you was smarter. I see that. It sounded like he was doing that in a haste, and he was anger, angry. So out of anger, he made a mistake. He made a misstep. Fine. Boom. Two years after Martin launched the operation to dismantle the Adam OCG, he believes the unit has gathered enough evidence to rearrest and charge the most significant suspected members of the gang still in the community. We should be fully clear how they're all linked together, what offences they're committing, and who they've exploited. Evidence against Hussein is combined with fresh information found on other phones seized from suspects during the first round of arrests. Go back. That. That's him. Yeah. The unit pulls the evidence. Allegedly. That. That's him. Yeah. Allegedly. How you know? The unit pulls the evidence into a single file making connections between each suspected member of the Adam network. You've got to show, evidentially, from top to bottom how, how they're functioning as a, as a gang. They are conspiring as a group to commit crime, to exploit people, to earn money. It's not just one person. You're going after the whole gang. Arson Ali and the John Mia. Turning over over a thousand pounds a day just on cannabis, then. Jay said he's dealing class A drugs. Over a gang. Arson Ali and the John Mia. Turning over over a thousand pounds a day just on cannabis, then. Jay said he's dealing class A drugs. He's in contact with Arson Ali 325 times. It show a bid, sends a text message, Arson Ali. It's crazy how they hawk you down, ain't it? They was looking at them for 10 years. Couldn't really get in until bro did that with that axe. And from then on, two years go past and everybody gone. Bear cops about G. Nick Tisham is clearly warning them about police presence. Vid and Sajid Hussain had the following conversations. Statements relating to the gang's alleged exploitation of children are added to the file. The MO of this OCG is you are going to target a child to deal drugs. Going back when we first started this, on Reggie May phone, there is a picture of a then 13-year-old child. He's kid one. The team has identified 28 children. They believe the Adam Man has targeted to sell Class A drugs. Jay said, supplies children with cocaine. He's hooking them on drugs and putting them in debt. He then gets the children to deal drugs. These are not intelligence links anymore. These fuckers should be remanded, like, now. The fresh file of evidence is sent to the Crown Prosecution Service to consider charges. And a date is set to arrest the remaining suspected members of the Adam OCG. Sent. I guess they accepted it this time. Strike day, they're gonna get them all at once again. Or try. Gallon is the proactive targeting of Rochdale's largest organised crime group whose main criminality is the distribution of Class A and B drugs to the dealers and users. This drug line is known as Adam. The Adam group are also heavily involved in several other criminal offences such as money laundering, cuckooing and acts of extreme violence. Almost 100 officers 
had drafted him from across Greater Manchester to take part in the strike. Nominals with this OCG repeatedly target vulnerable adults and children in order to facilitate their criminal activities. Just a couple stupid Sound mistakes, man. Is, is it, yeah, all of this. They met at 5.30 a.m. two times in a city hall with a hundred cops <laughs> to come get y'all. Over two mindless, over three actually now. Three mindless mishaps. <gasps> 17 offenders at 11 different addresses throughout the New Bold and Small Bridge areas of Rochdale. And what's crazy is all three of those mishaps or all three of those situations were a show of power. Oh, the power is in my hand. Watch me make a phone call. Look at all these guys here. Oh, here's my axe. Oh yeah, you owe us money, but you've been working for us. You got a kid and you just want to be in your kid's life now, even though you've probably paid us back a hundred times over. Oh yeah, we chasing you in here. We're in charge. Oh, are you? <laughs> I'm a witness now. That's what Buddy said. And then bro sent this from his, from he, he made no mistakes. He sent that and it was done. That text message. And all teams are ready. TNC to all teams. Stand by. The strike will be called. Strike, strike, strike. Simultaneous raids are carried out across Rochdale, arresting key suspected gang members, including Reggie Mia and Jake Stead. Yo, please! Don't fuck all on me! Yeah, I was Is anybody in? No. You've got to be fucking kidding me. Uh, we're missing Big Sham. Big Sham got him out of there. Suspected second in command is not at home. Nearby, another unit moves in on the home of suspected boss, Sajid Hussain. Sajid, it's the police, open the door! He gone too? Where is it? Fucking hell. Him and left gone. Police officers, where is it? Sajid, you're under arrest at the minute, okay, for section 45 of the Serious Crime Act and money laundering. Two or second or third time they got us. They got what they need this time. Each suspected gang member will be presented with the evidence the unit has gathered against them over the course of the investigation. You were arrested at that time. You had a mobile phone that was seized from you. Data extracted shows that is a drug dealing handset. It's a busy drug line. I'm putting it to you that you only work in partnership with ours on Ali. No comment. 
to get in contact with Reggie in a two-year period over 12,000 times. He supplied Class A and B drugs for this organised crime team, commit acts of violence alongside principal gang members, and um, you're involved in modern slavery also. I mean, you're shaking your head. Are you, are, is this bullshit, true? Bullshit, mate. Bullshit, man. Now do you know what Jet said? No comment. The message sent out on Christmas morning. Christmas deals, three for 60, no ifs, ni What can you tell me about that message? Mm -hmm. All them little slick sly messages the people be sending out that think nobody watching. Oh, they watching all of that. Snapchat and everything. They got it all. What happens when people don't pay? Do you often carry machetes with you to enforce your drug debts? No comment. What do you think about children being used to sell drugs? Bang out order. Have you ever asked a child to deliver drugs for you? Never. In November, conversation between you and Reggie, discussing two children. How do you know those children? No comment. Have you ever had them in your car? No comment. So we've got a statement <clears throat> from a PCSO and then seeing you in a car with two children identified as being exploited. I put it to you that you've exploited these children to deal drugs. Got you red handed, man. And it's got an occupation on my computer as a restaurateur. Is that correct? And if you're too small time, they will wait until you get big time and get you. They go, they, they. So, uh, what's Sanji here? Please. Um, we're laundry. It's like outside of the mafia, who do you know that has made it to the end of life with no jail and no and done this thing the whole entire life? Not many. Between the first of January this year until the present day has been on a through a business. Sajid Hussain is last into interview. Tell me everything that you know about the Adam drug line. Not coming. And you at the top? Not coming. We put you at the top. No comment. Just a brief diagram regarding who you contact on your phone. And pulled up the diagrams and everything. Who's involved in selling drugs on that line? No comment. Reginald Mia. How do you know him? No comment. Because you clearly do know him, you, you are messaging him. Don't come in. And what about Arslan Ali? Don't come in. And what's Iktisham's role within that drug line, your nephew? Don't come in. The current NAS restaurant, the building, it was a shell. So what money have you put into that to renovate it? No comment. You've not been declaring any income. So how have you got the money? No comment. No comment. So we have some messages between yourself and Iktisham. You're asking, needing some top-up cash. Give him 10,000, please. And what was that for? No comments. Because we're saying that's coming from the Adam Drug line. No comment. You've got a shell of a building, you've got no income, you've got no kind of profits coming from the last restaurants, and then you get into this. Can you give us an explanation for all that? No comment. No the reason simple, it's come from drugs. Allegedly. How's a 
with only eight minutes left. Are we gonna know the everything? They don't leave nothing out now. Joy, come to the Did I miss it? What happened to the lady cop that was involved too? What should happen to her? To considering the file of evidence, this time the Crown Prosecution Service agrees charges for 12 of the arrested suspects. Between the 1st of February 2015 and the 20th of June 2019, conspired together with other persons to supply a quantity of cocaine, a controlled drug of class A. Are you charged with conspiracy? Yep. Yeah. What bullshit. All 12 will be remanded in prison until trial. Well, at least y'all got each other. Okay, you are charged with the following offences. You converted criminal property, namely cash, knowing or suspecting it to represent proceeds of criminal conduct. Do you wish to make any reply to the charge? Is this, you know, obviously, there's different people here. This operation, Just took it personal, this Martin Suna. Put that on camera too. Martin Suna's not doing it personal, this. He's going to get it. You just never done, huh? More threats is crazy. Throughout the time I've been investigating, Organised criminals, threats have been made against me. Those threats, when they are made, they're not nice. It's not pleasant. Of course, you consider that threat. They might but you manage it, it's not going to stop you doing your job. People could say, Why would you want to investigate the criminal gangs? Why would I not? I'm a police officer, and these people, organised criminality, is a blight of society. I want to investigate these people. People have been charged following dawn raids in Rochdale. 11 addresses were raided on Thursday as part of an operation to tackle drugs and the exploitation of young and vulnerable people. The 12 people were charged with a range of offences, including money laundering, possessing criminal property and supplying Class A drugs. Six months later, OK. They're wrapping it up rather quickly in this little eight minutes, ain't they? Over three weeks, an initial seven suspected members of the gun, including Sajid Hussain, are tried at court in central Manchester. Iktisham Abid is believed to be in hiding in Pakistan. Oh, yeah. He got up out of there. After the first time, he was nah. Today's the end of a two-year investigation. There's one thing everybody in the community knowing what's going on. It's quite a different thing to successfully prosecute an established organised crime group from the bosses of that group all the way down to the street dealers. But there is a chance that Sajid will uh, not get a custodial sentence today. Why is that? Do you want Sajid first? Go on then. Uh, 32 months. 32. Got three years with his ten percent off. Got thirty-two months. And thirty-two months in custody. Absolutely. Thirty-two months. He gonna do half, right? Or three? Or or uh, two thirds? Two years? Y'all put in two years of y'all life. <laughs> he 
believe in exchange? Uh, Reggie Mia, nine years. Jesus. Aslan Ali, nine, nine. years. Jake's dead, seven years, two months. Uh, skinny and extra sticks on top. Big sentences, them, aren't they? Big sentences. That's a message from the courts, isn't it? You are a gang. You're a serious and organised criminal. So he gets the side job two and a half years. He said, you have a leading role. If you'd have not put a guilty plea in, you'd have gone to prison for three years. But you've put a guilty plea in, so two and a half years. He's gone as high as eyes we could expect that. Oh, you're not street level dealers, you're a gang. You're controlling what's going out in them streets. You're talking in one thing, on one ledger, two kilos of heroin. That's just one purchase. You, you, you're proper players, you're proper boys. You're only in restaurants, you ain't street dealers. And the boss goes to prison for money laundering. That's what the boss always go to prison for, money laundering or tax evasion. They don't ever go for nothing else. They get that baby charge. Two and a half, he gonna be out in a year or something. Mm. And Sham won't come back into this country, he's gone for 12 years. It is a fantastic yeah, result for people home. there. People look at that saying, right, that is a deterrent now for doing what you've been doing. It's that simple. We started targeting this gang several years back. It, it's been, it's been tough. You're living and breathing this because that's the only way you get these people. But it's two years. I wouldn't, I wouldn't take back. I'd do it again. Knowing who was going to be put in prison, children that, that we've helped, and adults, and just put a bit of trust again in the community. Take a bit sinking. I've known about the Adam Gang in Rochdale since 2010. It's long overdue, this organised crime gang received sentences for what they've been doing for a number of years in Rochdale. It's long overdue. This, this was always a clear message. You're not doing this in Rochdale. After a two-year investigation, really a 12-year thing, but... Members of the Adam OCG were convicted with sentences ranging between two and a half and nine years. Really 12 years because his nephew got 12 and he ain't coming back. Six other members of the gang were found guilty after separate trials. After pleading guilty, Sajjah Hassan was convicted of laundering money obtaining for it to sell of drugs. No charges were brought against him for tax related. Oh, wow. After a criminal investigation, no charges were brought against him for. You think that after he served his whatever time for the money laundering, they're going to bring the charges up about the taxing? Just to hurt his feelings, or can they do that? After a criminal investigation, no charges were brought against the officer. Was she reinstated or no? After an, wait, wait. After an internal investigation, no disciplinary proceedings were brought against the police officer. Wow. I didn't, if I'm being honest, there was really nothing against, they, they couldn't jam her too hard, they couldn't really do nothing, she was just being diligent, taking notes, she's still in there, doing her thing, I guess, tell her leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post, let me make sure it's done, I'm gone.